good guys listeners we have max lugavier here he's a I mean, I, in addition to New York Times bestseller, health and wellness genius, what, 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 what's your titles? I don't want to undersell you. Yeah, I call myself a health and science journalist, mm. um, which is accurate. Cool. Podcaster, author, um, filmmaker. Yes. Yeah. So do you think, and here's a softball, let's start easy. Do you think kids at birth, much like a hepatitis vaccine, that they should be getting Ozempic? Thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> Ozempic from birth. <laughs> It is kind of like an anti-obesity vaccine, you know, in, in many ways. Uh, but no, the short answer is absolutely not. No. What, what do you think about old, old uh, semaglute? Semaglute. <laughs> Everybody seems to be on it in Los Angeles. Apparently, it's like sold out. And, and L.A. does not have, uh, you know, the seemingly the obesity epidemic that you see elsewhere around the country. And so the, the fact that that would be sold out in Los Angeles is a curious phenomena yes. for sure. Um, no, I mean, I, I'm glad that that exists for people that need it, like people that, that, that need it, that have tried and exhausted all other options. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of, of, of medicine when it's there to, as a fail safe. Right. But the fact that people are now using it as a sort of cop out for the hard work that it can sometimes take to, but, the, but there's like more benefit in that. Right. Right. Like, it's like, you're taking the stairs, you're, um, the effort is sustainable and the um the the wins are i think are much greater than if you just take the shot and so yeah i'm in general like not a fan for your for your average person what if you have eight pounds to lose before coachella thoughts <laughs> eight pounds <laughs> yeah no 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 um no we don't have like long-term data on the side effects things like that uh it's unless people and and when people do come off the drug so unless you want to be on the drug long term mm -hmm. like the results are not sustained unless you are actively resistance training i mean there's a, a strong risk of muscle loss you know which can lead to metabolic dysfunction and things like that down the down the line so we don't yet know what the what the sum total effect of that drug over a person's lifespan is unless they then like learn simultaneously like the healthy habits which they're probably not right because mm. the drug is such a it's like such a quick fix not to be too bullish on the old ozem it's my <laughs> last question i swear i'm not considering it um <laughs> <laughs> but like and i agree with you right like the totality of the willpower the cardiovascular health the the just overall experience of of using your willpower on a journey to lose weight if if you're able to like is you know pays dividends that being said, like, I think what they're seeing is because they're starting to use it like in Alzheimer's trials, right? Because mm. it, it basically just pulls sugar from your blood. And in theory, right, like everyone can benefit from less sugar in their blood. Like if the if the if people aren't getting like a seventh toe in a couple of years. Yeah. Like, couldn't we all benefit from being on it to a certain degree? Just less sugar in the blood? Well, I mean, that was the thinking behind the longevity trials that um, they've that metformin has undergone. So metformin is a much older drug right. and it's used in the setting of, of type two diabetes. And they've, they've looked at it as a longevity mimetic, but what they found in recent research is that it, it can blunt some of the positive impacts of positive effects of exercise. And so all these drugs, I mean, they have effects, but then they also have side effects, which are not really side effects. They're also effects. which is we don't like, we don't consider them. Right. right? And so, um, yeah, so I'm I'm skeptical that a drug like you know Ozempic is is safe for the long term. But again, like if if you've exhausted all other options, um, then I think you know obviously being obese is not healthy. It's associated with cancer. It's you know multiple different types of cancer. It's associated with type two di diabetes. It's associated with you know pretty much everything bad that you can imagine. There are some exceptions. You can be you know, obese and, and metabolically healthy, but that is the minority. And so for that person, I think like if they've exhausted all other option, then, you know, then again, as a fail safe, but it's not something that I would like, you know, default mm -hmm. to. Now recently, and I don't mean to call him out, Ben uh, threw up during a full court game of basketball. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I was going to say, uh, this Barbara Walters style interview has been very interesting to listen to. And I'm curious if we're interested in a spirited debate because I've been yeah. hearing and hearing and I have a couple of thoughts. So please first popping back to the girl that needs to lose eight pounds before she goes to Coachella. Hmm. That girl is also going to Coachella and doing Molly. <laughs> and so I don't think that we need to wait to see the long-term effects of Ozempic because she's doing hard drugs. <laughs> and so I guess my thought is like, everybody should just do whatever the f they want with their bodies. And mm. I understand and agree with you that maybe we don't know the long-term effects, but we also don't, or we know the long-term effects of that same girl having issues with starving herself or like, is there like, is it that much worse than her just deciding not to eat anything for two weeks? Well, no, you're right. Like people in, in LA are terrified of gluten, but they'll like binge drink on the weekends and yeah. do every drug known to men. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a weird dichotomy. You know, LA is a weird place. Yeah. Everybody, you know, almost everybody has a fractured relationship with food in this town uh -huh. because of Everywhere. the intense body pressure and things like that, which I think is like, it's obviously a huge problem. Um, so yeah, that's why I think it's it's important to like take a step back, take inventory, take stock and, and realize that like your eight pound, that eight pound fat loss could be achieved, you know, pretty easily with some really simple like, you know, li diet tweaks. Um, unfortunately though, today we live in a time where there's like intense diet polarity, right? Where um, there's a lot of like misinformation, for example, where it comes when it, when it comes to like fat loss and things like that. People people tend to promote, especially in social media, this idea that you've got to be on like an extreme diet to lose fat, which is not true, mm. and that promotes dichotomous thinking, which sets people up for failure. You know, with regard to these diets, they're like either on the perfect diet or they're not. They're moral failures. When the reality is like most people can just it's just like really simple takes to. to uh, tweaks that can that can you know lead to significant weight loss progress i think it's hard though like i i love obviously i'm a i'm very pro ozempic we've spoken about it before just as somebody who has gained and lost 60 pounds so many times in my life like i can tell you why i've gained and lost are you on it weight. i'm not on it oh but in general it's something that i do think would be something that i would consider because my personal relationship with food has been so toxic mm. and i know for a fact that the american diet and foods in general that we're often seen or we do see as healthy are so loaded with sugar mm. that i think that some people just have an inability to stop these cravings unless they get so unbelievably knowledgeable about what they actually should be eating but I think things on a daily basis are disguised as healthy when they're not. Like a Sara Lee's whole wheat bread. A Belvita that looks, yeah. breakfast that looks, biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe the, that shit? Insane. Like, it's a sweet cracker, Papa. I, it's all of it. Like the amount of sugar, Josh, you said it before and I thought it was very interesting. Like couldn't everybody benefit from having sugar pulled from their bloodstream? I feel like here, yes, because even our bread... Like I, I like Ezekiel bread because I found it and I know that it's a good, healthy alternative and it's sprouted and it's not loaded with sugar. But I think that most people have no f***ing clue what that is, don't want to spend $9 on a loaf of bread that they need to freeze. Yeah. And are going to go and buy the brown bread because we've been told that brown bread <laughs> is good for you when that brown bread is like 30 grams of sugar. When right? in reality, the only bread good for you is Hero Bread, a proud sponsor of the good guys. <laughs> with Hero Bread, they've got buns, uh, tortillas, they got it all. With only five grams of, sorry. I just, Such good <laughs> bread. By the way, have you had Hero Bread? I've never had it. Oh, oh my God. God. It's good stuff. Is it stuff. bomb? Soft, it's bomb. Delicious. Where do you buy it? You buy it online, herobread.com. Hero slash good guys. Interesting, <laughs> nice. Are they an actual sponsor? They are an actual sponsor. Wow, amazing. I they, love that. Actually, and we're not bullshitting because there's definitely some sponsors. Where I'm like, yeah, I like this. <laughs> no, they're but good. They're really good. 10 out of 10. Which, yeah. sponsors, healthy. You, which sponsors do you not like that much? <laughs> <laughs> Let me list. I don't like Babbel. <laughs> Babbel canceled on us. What a, I'm over oh, it. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. They pulled out. <laughs> Sorry. Pulled out. <laughs> Ezekiel, Ezekiel, I believe, is higher satiety because it, they... They, they'll put like legume flour in it right like aren't isn't there like lentil and stuff and like ancient see if you don't know yeah how I don't do we know. expect the regular people it's to know it's all sprouted though right which is better for your gut when eating carbs yeah allegedly it reduces like phytic acid which serves as an, as an anti-nutrient can you know potentially promote like 
you know, gut uh, can impair digestion and things like that. So I think sprouting, yeah, it increases nutrient availability, reduces some of those like anti-nutrients and things like that. If we're not going on Ozempic, do you have a diet that you recommend or you're anti-diet? No, I'm not. Di diets work. The, the issue is that you've got to find... Today, what it takes to be healthy requires a degree of restriction, and you it's ultimately up to you to find out the form of, of restriction that's going to feel the least restrictive to you, right? Mm -hmm. So that you're going to be able to it, it actually adhere to it. Because, and I mean, you can go to the, and as somebody who's written <laughs> essentially what are, what can be considered diet books, right? Like, there are a million diet books out there. It's just like, you've got to find the one that's going to be the most uh, easily adhered to mm -hmm. by you. So if, if I'm promoting like a diet that's like, all red meat, for example, like a, a strict carnivore diet, and you just don't happen to enjoy red meat, then that's not going to be a sustainable diet for for you. Sure. Even though that diet can work for you know, and 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 does work for many, if it if it if you don't enjoy it, it's not going to work for you. And mm -hmm. so that's why diets fail. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think like there's this there's this problematic thinking in the wellness industry where it's like either calories, you know, are all that matter or they don't matter at all. And we have this like tribalism in the wellness world where like you see both ideas promoted when the reality is that the, the the truth is in the middle. Like calories do matter but they're not all that matter. So if you're if you're negligent to the fact that like calories matter, then you know, people end up going on these low carb high fat diets and they'll lose weight to a point because, you know, one of those diets pretty much any any difference, any um keto any, yeah, any different, any any diet that's different Eating. from like the standard American diet, you're going to see an improvement from because mm -hmm. those you know diets tend those diets tend to be higher in satiety and things like that. Um, but inevitably, people get to like weight loss stalls, and that's you know I think part of the reason for that is you know people will start eating like fat bombs and things like that. I mean, you can go to Erewhon and you can see like high quality, high fat, you know, products with a health halo around them, which are highly fattening foods. You know, they're so yeah. calorically dense. Explain the health halo. Do you know? Have you heard this? No. Ooh. Yeah, so uh, uh, don't worry. Give it to I, me. Know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it's just basically like it's marketing. It's like marketing speak for when something is promoted as 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 healthy. Oh, sure. Um, mm -hmm. but it's really, I mean, like not. those buzzwords like no yeah. added sugar. Yeah, or yeah. You see this a lot like, in the plant based world. Like yeah. a lot of vegan products are mm -hmm. have that health halo on it. Mm -hmm. They're marketed as being better for you than mm -hmm. their animal source counterparts. Mm -hmm. When the vast majority of the time, they're not. They're not better for you. They're also not better for the environment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oreos, vegan. Yeah, 100% plant-based. Yeah. Most of the junk foods consumed in the United States are plant-based. I mean, the your average American is by and large on a plant-based diet. Most of the calories that your average American consumes comes from like wheat, corn, and rice. I'm plant-based? Most yes. people are on, yeah. And, and our so consumption <laughs> of meat has declined over the past few decades. And our health problems have only in increased. Obesity mm. has tripled over the past 50 years. Mm. So it's uh yeah it's not it's not that we're eating too many animal source foods or anything like that it's you know the, the food quality has steadily declined we we're seeing now this pandemic really of of an influx of what are called ultra processed foods on the market there was like a machine learning um you know study that came out finding that 73% of the items in your average supermarket are ultra processed mm. like like food items that are made in in factories that you couldn't possibly make in your own kitchen and these products are like the one of the defining characteristics of the standard american obesogenic diet today's episode of good guys is brought to you by masterclass you know i've always wanted to be better at screenwriting and I just didn't want to be that guy at a UCLA extension class, like, with like, isn't that the guy from that that kid show? And why is he here? And what happened? And just like, I know, I know, Josh, get over your ego. But the reality is, I wanted to have access to true masters from the comfort of my home and be able to grow and learn and and to sort of challenge myself and be exposed to some of the best information possible, but I didn't quite know how. And then Masterclass entered my life and I was like, oh, this is how. I remember seeing these ads for Masterclass, you know, over the year and there were these people like Steve Martin and Judd Apatow and, and Aaron Sorkin and David Mamet. These are people in my business, but then of course, like, you know, Gordon Ramsay and and Chris Voss, who's this incredible, you know, FBI negotiator to uh, Jane Goodall to to all these different people that are true, like masters at what they do. 
and thinking there's no way that they can all be on one platform giving you kind of their their tips, their insight, their their lessons. But that's what you get on Masterclass. There are over 180 classes to pick from. Everything from Malcolm Gladwell, who's written books like Outliers and whatnot, to Esther Perel, you know, get, get a, little, a little bit of that love and relationship advice to Mariah Carey if you're trying to, you know, tap into your inner, inner diva. And you'll find practical takeaways that you can apply to your life and your work. And like I said, I've been working on becoming a better writer. And so being able to watch Aaron Sorkin and pick up the things he did during, you know, West Wing, one of his greatest shows, or Newsroom, or The Social Network, it's just it's just such a gift. So you can get unlimited access to every class. And right now, as a Good Guys listener, you can get 15% off when you go to masterclass.com slash good guys. That's masterclass.com slash good guys for 15% off an annual membership masterclass.com slash good guys. There's nothing quite like element electrolyte powder, something that you'd add to your water. Here, if I may, you know, the cool thing about element, this is an ad, guys, so stay tuned. It's a tasty electrolyte drink mix with everything you need and really nothing you don't. That means a lot of salt with no sugar. It contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio, 1,000 milligrams sodium, 200 milligrams potassium, 60 milligrams magnesium with none of the junk, no sugar, no artificial ingredient, no BS, no gluten. Listen, I took my element this morning. I take it every morning. I'm not getting those cramps, those little aches and pains from not being properly hydrated that I would normally get from my runs where I try to outrun my evil thoughts. Ben, what do you think of Element? I think that Element is absolutely fantastic. Tastes great too. Throw it in there. It's gorgeous. You set me up beautifully, Ben, and God bless you for that. Look, the truth is when you sweat, the primary electrolyte loss is sodium and athletes can lose up to seven grams per day. And let's be honest. You're an athlete. Now, it'll fit into your low-carb, paleo, or keto diet. And the truth is, if you're getting headaches or feeling fatigued or whatever, it's probably because you're not properly hydrated. So do yourself a favor. Eliminate headaches, muscle cramps, fatigue with Element. All right? Right now, Element is offering listeners of the Good Guys podcast a free sample pack with any purchase. That's eight single-serving packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors or share Element with a salty friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash goodguys. This deal is only available through my link. You must go to D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash Good guys. Element offers no questions asked refunds. Try it totally risk-free. If you don't like it, share it with a salty friend and they will give you your money back. No questions asked. You have nothing to lose. Did you see the Starbucks egg white bite nutritional fact panel that came out because they now put them in Walmart? Did no. Did you see this? I have to bring it up. Oh, I love them. It's so important. Don't ruin good, it bad. I'm going to ruin it for you. No, I eat the egg white wrap like almost every morning. It's well, so good. Well, because when you say- I don't know. I'm talking about the bites. You know those they're bites? Like, they're like well, I would expect oh, them to be really protein. low calorie based on how they're, but you're saying they're... Are, are, they I'm, are low cal. Oh, they're low cal. So what's the problem? they're high sodium. Uh, okay. Good they're, protein. They're, they're egg white bites, right? Like you think that they are egg whites There's, and then spinach, red peppers, and some feta. Well, that's one flavor. Yeah. They have three different flavors. Are they flavors. actually good? Like I'm not, actually? Listen, they're, I'm, so, they're solid. I'm yeah. no Howard yeah. Schultz shell over here. <laughs> but no, no, they're really good. Huh. The Starbucks food is great. Also, the app is fun. You can collect stars. You're getting free bites. How come I'm, How come we're getting no Starbucks love over here? Yeah, yeah we should be. Well, we're not going to. <laughs> After I read this. <laughs> Damn. But I'm just like, it goes to your point, though, that even something that is just egg whites mm-hmm. is not egg whites anymore. I'm going to read this and let me know if any of this speaks to you. Egg whites, cottage cheese. Uh, uh, I like both of those. Okay. Same here. Yeah. Cultured non-fat milk, milk, uh, whey, so far, so salt, good. maltodextrin, citric acid, carasegan, car- mono binder. and diglycerides, salt. locust bean gum, guar gum, natural flavors, vitamin A, palamente, carbon dioxide to huh. maintain freshness, Monterey Jack cheese, uh, then powdered cellulose, not a mycin. <laughs> Natamycin is like a preservative, yeah. Uh, red bell pepper, rice starch, unsalted butter, spinach, canola oil, feta cheese, 
Green not terrible. Onion, green the onions. Onions. It's not the terrible. The only well, negative terrible. I'm hearing is canola oil, right? This veg. Let's talk about these vegetable oils because yeah. those are shit, right? Bad. All yeah. seed oils. Seed. Bad. I'm not seed. a fan. Seed I heard seed bad. oils. It's <laughs> shit, right? Yeah. This What's podcast is not sponsored by, by seed big oil. seed oil. <laughs> Wait, but before, thank before God. Because so if it fine. was, I'd are, walk are, out. Are, so you're saying those are fine? The, what I just read. Yeah, I mean uh, nothing too nothing too concerning. Look, I was I did a video recently on my Instagram. This is fine. Well, I don't like the I don't I personally don't like canola oil, but ingredients are written in order of like prevalence and canola oils at the very end. So like, you know, there's probably not a, oh, a ton of it. True? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. So yeah, what's Yeah, so what's in higher concentration is tends to be at the top of the ingredients Interesting. list. Interesting. Yeah, so right there the first ingredient was egg white. Yeah. Right? And then huh. everything that you listed within the first five or six ingredients was pretty sound. All right, so then egg white bites are good. Yeah, they, and Starbucks can be a Yeah, sponsor. they're not terrible. Dude, I we did a... We debunked the theory. This is a big theory on TikTok that these egg white bites are terrible for you. Really? Be heard, yeah. <laughs> be heard it here first. Yeah, they're I mean, not, I wouldn't get my nutrition information from TikTok. They're not that terrible. But, um, no, I did a, I did a video recently on... Um, on Instagram that went semi-viral and of it course like good. yeah and I got some haters for you know for it but I went to a McDonald's mm. and apparently McDonald's has like a secret menu you can order anything on the menu a la carte so you can order if it's if it's before 11 you can order what's called like round egg which is literally fresh eggs that they crack into a little circular thing and they cook like uh over hard wow yeah what they put in egg McMuffins like that's sure. that's fresh egg like at, Mc at McDonald's, those are all made to order, and they're they're called round egg, and you can order like a plate of like a like a, you know, like a tray of them. Mm. But after eleven, so you can also order um, quarter pounder beef patties. And I'm not going to speak to the meat quality at McDonald's, and I'm not you know definitely not sponsored by them in any way. But the protein quality, if you're on the road in a pinch or strapped for cash or whatever, and you order four of those burger patties, four uh, quarter pounder burger patties from the a la carte menu, that's a pound of beef for like eight bucks. Yes. And it's super high quality meat, I mean uh, protein, made only with salt and pepper. And I have followers that have worked at McDonald's and they told me they don't use any oil on the grill. It's just like straight meat to the, to the griddle. Mm. And that's it. So, you know, you think like that's an amazing find, right? Right yeah. there for people who are in a pinch. But of course I got hate from that on my- What was like, the hate? Well, the hate is like, are you now shilling McDonald's? Like, look at how they treat the animals. Like all this like other stuff, like it's such poor quality, but I'm like, no, it's actually not poor quality. It's like, I, I ate them. I ate a pound of McDonald's beef, tasted indistinguishable from any beef that I would buy like at the supermarket. I've actually heard because the number one buyer of meat in America is McDonald's that they actually get the top choice cows. Yeah. Because they can be, yeah. Really? Yeah, they're buying the most meat, so they get it at a good price, and they're getting the best cows. Hmm. They get it at a good price, and it's like people think that, like, first of all, people thought that I was like that this was a paid thing. I've worked with brands. You have to st state that disclose. you're sponsored. You have to disclose that. There's no way that that post, like, I would have to have put ad like at the very top of the caption. So for one, there's that, and second, like, a company of that size is under massive scrutiny. So like. I mean, I'm not, I'm not defending them or anything like that, but like, they're the likelihood of them lying if they're saying that the meat is just like beef, salt, and pepper. I'm willing to to believe that. I don't know. Am I am I like naive? I don't, I don't think that you're naive. Yeah. I did again. My brain is filled with so many conspiracy theories <laughs> that like my, I ultimately go to, couldn't they easily make the meat taste like meat and make the color of the meat look like meat? Like, what was that documentary? Um, there was a documentary on fish. Uh, sea spiracy, maybe. Ma I think yeah, sea spiracy, where the salmon that is uh, oh colored rays they color. Yeah, it's like gray. yeah, it's gray. Yeah, but they make it look pink. Did you see this? I so haven't. so like the question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, it's Never fine. Salmon, Ruin my life. First, you start with the egg whites. You're gonna kill my the majority of my diet here, Ben. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, couldn't like, do we really know that the beef isn't just gray? I don't know. I think they would have to disclose that. And yeah. the, and the and the thing about the salmon too is like that's just fear mongering because salmon, like, yeah, all it's salmon, yeah, okay. salmon might start out as as gray or whatever, but they the coloring that they use in farmed salmon is astaxanthin, which is what wild salmon actually. Huh. It's what colors wild salmon. So it's the same compound. Wow. Yeah, it's like white flamingos. Flamingos are born white and they right. turn pink because they eat algae which has this like pigment in it called astaxanthin. So it doesn't like the fact that they start out gray, so what? They like, that's natural, that's like physiologic. And then they eat this pigment, which is naturally found in algae. And that's what turns the, in the case of the flamingos, the feathers pink. And in the case of salmon, it turns their skin, 
It turns so, their flesh what a orange. Wealth, what a wealth of knowledge. I'm just debunking <laughs> all of my you. horrendous conspiracy theories. I thought, like, literally in my head, I'm like, oh, they're using red dye number seven. No. Mixed with something to, like, make the, yeah, the no. salmon pinker. Th they're feeding it the, the compound. It's a carotenoid. And it's actually very, very healthy, actually. It's oh. very beneficial. Yeah, it's astaxanthin. I, I actually supplement with astaxanthin. Wow. Yeah, which is a really good, it's, like, great for your eyes, for your skin. It might protect from your skin from sun damage. Yeah, no, what unbelievable! So, uh, so farm raised salmon's cool because that wild salmon is a little too wild. For it's me. a little too gamey. It's a little gamey. Gamey. <laughs> yeah. gamey. It's like a bad lamb chop. Yeah, you ever have a bad lamb chop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they they taste like you're taking a bite out of the lamb. <laughs> like a yeah, like a bite of like a Josh's sheep. shoe over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I'm... Do people eat sheep? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Why not? I don't know. I'm just thinking. Know. Have you ever seen sheep on a menu? It's That's tougher. A sheep. Not. You've eaten sheep? No, but I'm sure in parts of the world they're crushing sheep. Right? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that Probably, yeah. Yeah. Sheep milk, that's a thing, right? Mut Isn't it Sheep's milk? mutton? Mutton. Is I that... don't know. Wow. Above my pay grade. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. What? Uh, so you mentioned things you're supplementing with. What? What's on like your catalog of supplements? What do you like? What do you not like? Huge fan. Well, astaxanthin is something I've been taking for like 15 years and have no, no affiliation. But um, in general... Fish oil, I think, is very beneficial. I think magnesium, very beneficial. Do you take I, magnesium? I do. I do. Yeah. About 50% of Americans don't consume adequate magnesium. And magnesium is it's used in hundreds of processes in the body that range in their importance from ATP generation, so it's like energy, and and all the way up the scale to DNA repair, so helping to potentially prevent aging or for slow me, aging. For me, it helps calm my brain. Like mm. I find that I not only do I sleep better, but it like lowers my stress levels almost instantly. Wow. It's crazy. What product do you take? Is it like a brand it, or a... No, I just... It's just magnesium. I try not to get the magnesium chloride. I try to get like the... What I thought... What I think is like just true magnesium. Yeah. Maybe Nature's Bounty is one of the brands. Something like that, or yeah. Whatever is a Dwayne Reed. Yeah, whatever's and there. It, and it works. Yeah. Like I, I love it. I take 200 milligrams before bed. Dope. And yeah. I love it. No, magnesium is the like shit. Sleep like a baby. I yeah. love it. Have you been taking it? Yeah, I take it in my Element Electrolyte Powder, a proud sponsor <laughs> of the Good lo good Guys, which, by the way, it's delicious. Delicious. Yeah, love it. potassium and magnesium. Huge fan of Element. Yeah, Element's the shit. It's good stuff. Um, yeah, sodium, potassium, magnesium, chloride, all the good things. Yeah, so I don't take like, I mean, you see some people in the, in the quote-unquote biohacker space that take like, you know, they'll... They're proud of the fact that they take like hundreds of supplements a day. I think if you eat a nutrient dense diet, you really don't, you know, have the need for that, mm -hmm. for that um, many supplements. I mean, I, I take a very minimalist approach. Creatine is something I take. I think creatine is really beneficial. It's very important. Right? Yeah. Do you take it? I don't, and I should. It's good. I mean, it's good what for. Is it? For first and foremost, it was sort of advertised for the bodybuilding community, but that was sort of a misnomer, right? Because it can really benefit everyone. It benefits. Yeah, it benefits like. Now there's research coming out showing how it can benefit mental health. Mm. Um, but in general, yeah, it's one of these like highly studied supplements. One of the few in the sports supplement industry with a long, not just uh, safety record, but efficacy record. So it's like it, it helps you exert more power in the gym, mm. which it doesn't, you know, that doesn't in and of itself the supplement the creatine in and of itself doesn't give you m more strength or muscle, but it allows you to do more work in the gym, which then you you know obviously adapt to, and it can lead to greater strength gains, um, you know over time. Hmm. It gives you like more um, more energy. Essentially, is how it works. Does it give you the energy to go to the gym? Does it? <laughs> <laughs> I take creatine. I wish. Gym. <laughs> <laughs> Just run there. We're talking about seed. Everybody's talking about their gut health. I'm always thinking about my gut health. This, the antimicrobial, all the stuff going on in the belly. Everybody's talking about it. There are over 3.8 million posts on Instagram tagged hashtag gut health. Did you know that? A staggering 653.7 million videos on TikTok and a quick Google search will yield you over 29.7 million news results. Gut health, probiotics, and the microbiome are buzzing in conversation, headlines, and hashtags. Discoveries in microbiome research are transforming medicine, hygiene, diet, and the choices we make each day for our health. 
With this new frontier, however, comes an overload of information and misinformation. Can't have that. That can feel confusing and overwhelming. Seed is a microbial science's pioneering applications of bacteria to impact human and environmental health. They develop scientifically validated, clinically studied, next-generation probiotics for people and the planet. Their first product for humans... The DS-01 Daily Symbiotic is the only probiotic I trust and take. If you've taken probiotics before and haven't felt the difference, it's likely because the capsule isn't designed to survive your stomach acid, bile salts, and digestive enzymes. Seed, though, is different. Now more than ever, it's important to trust science and integrity when it comes to learning about and maintaining a healthy microbiome Seed is the company that I trust. I take Seed every morning. Big fan of the product. I love it and I trust it. Avoid gut mania and head to the trusted source for symbiotics. Visit seed.com slash good guys and use code good guys to redeem 30% off your first month of Seed DS-01 Daily Symbiotic. That's seed.com slash good guys and use code Good guys. You know, I don't know if you're familiar with KiwiCo, but it's an incredible kid-based toy adventure. Look, summer is the time to make memories with your kids. And whether you're staying home or heading out on adventures, KiwiCo invites kids, hey, and kids at heart, to celebrate the season of discovery through hands-on fun. My son, Max, loves KiwiCo. He sees the box come once a month, and he has like a small episode when he sees the box because... He knows that he's going to get these, you know, three different projects that's going to be hands-on, seriously fun, but it'll be like uh, like a bottle rocket kit. Or, or the other day he got this like wrecking ball thing that was built out of cardboard and he could build it himself. He got this fun windsock that he got to decorate in his newest KiwiCo. Um, basically, it's like this formulated box made by you know, real engineers, science people, and it's a mix of, of art projects, science. It's, it's smart. It's going to basically keep your kids busy on something that they can tackle that you'll love helping them with, but it's not something that you literally have to help them every step of the way because it's too complex. Ben, do your hypothetical kids like KiwiCo? I was going to say, how do I get my hands on some KiwiCo? This sounds fantastic. I want to build something. I want to make something. I'm an arts and crafts guy. How do I get my hands on some KiwiCo? I'm, I'm so glad you asked that. And I know that you and your crew of four gorgeous children are going to love KiwiCo the way I do. It's it's fun for kids of all ages. And there's no commitment. You can pause or cancel any time. And you know, it's awesome products. Plus, KiwiCo makes it easy to take discovery on the go. Everything you need is in the crate, including materials, easy to follow instructions. It's perfect for travel, boredom, busting for the entire family. So have an awesome summer with KiwiCo. Get 50% off your first month, plus free shipping on any crate line with code GOODGUYS at KiwiCo.com. That's 50% off your first month at K-I-W-I-C-O.com. Promo code good guys. Well, ask Max, because you talk about how like oh. you're an athletic guy, you love basketball and certain things, but you also sort of have an aversion to classic, just kind of, you know, trudging it out at the gym. Yeah, like I'm embarrassed to say, and my privilege is gonna show, I've had multiple personal trainers that have trained me for free. Like it's not like there's no barrier. Usually the barrier for private training is money, hmm. right? And I am fortunate enough that I have a a great community of very respected, healthy people around me that would love to train me. All your friends are personal I, trainers. All of them. All of them <laughs> except for Josh. Um, I just don't. I just don't like it. I don't like the feeling of feeling sore. People have said to me that like uh, you just have never gone long enough to stop feeling sore. So you're always mm. just in that two to three week period where you're sore, mm. which I think is a lie. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm. I'm not a. I, I, I just don't like it. I prefer to, I, I walk a lot. That's I get great. in my 10,000 steps. I play a lot of basketball. I enjoy that. Play a lot of golf. I don't think that helps anything mm. physically, but I enjoy it. 
Yeah, golf is. Do I need do I, do I need to be in the gym? And if I do, maybe like you don't need to be in the gym, but some form of, of resistance exercise is really important. It is. I mean, at the very least, for for bone health, it which is. is which mm-hmm. is which is crucial. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, for metabolic health, it's you don't. But you don't have to be in a gym to do that. Like you, you can resist against gravity with calisthenic exercise, mm. um, mm-hmm. push ups, things like that. Mm-hmm. Even even like a, a vigorous hike is mm-hmm. great. But that stuff is important. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Beyond like aerobic exercise, cardio exercise, strength training is, is really important. I think me and Josh are going to do a, an MMA fight against nice. each other. Yeah. Do you guys do uh, like jujitsu? Because I know it's a huge trend now. Like, It is. I don't do jujitsu because I have an aversion to smells. <laughs> yeah. And I don't want to get that close to another man. Same, actually. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's a little much. I also don't want to get with some like egomaniac who puts me in an arm bar and breaks my elbow. Yeah. But um, I've, I've trained boxing for like a decade, and so, I like that. So I enjoy awesome. combat, but yeah. I want to be about three feet away. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. I like boxing, too. I, do, I took that up during the pandemic. Yeah. But, yeah, I have the same qualms about jiu-jitsu. And it's like everybody is seemingly doing it now. Yes. You know, like Zuckerberg is doing it. And so, you're like, I could take Zuckerberg, but I guess now not because he's like a jiu-jitsu you know, he's in incredible dude. shape. He's a squeak. He's a little guy. He's a little little fun guy. You could like throw into a ceiling fan. But <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Yadis Papas. That's his joke. But um, <laughs> yeah, he's he's in incredible shape. And I heard that the Coliseum actually reached out, like the Coliseum where the Gladiators fought, Whoa. reached out to him and Musk and said, "If you guys want to fight, do it here." At oh my the God! Can you imagine? No. Damn. And Musk has been training with George St. Pierre, arguably the greatest combat sports athlete to ever live. That's insane. Wow. Dude. Holy smokes. He they are pissed about threads. <laughs> I was just I was literally about to say threads because we're such Elon Musk girlies. Are you an Elon Musk you guy? Fan? Yeah. Girly? Yeah. You are. Yeah. So like threads, like technically, it's kinda like giving him the middle finger. It is, yeah. I got I did threads though. And it's like a clone, but it's inferior. But it you know, it's like I don't know, uh, you know, uh, Twitter, I feel like growth has stagnated. And if you can, you know, funnel all of your whatever Instagram followers over to threads and like, why not? Bingo. Yeah. That's right. the thing. It's so easy and lazy. I made a threads. I, I, I this morning I made a threads. I'm nice. at like 6,000 followers or whatever. And it'll just keep growing. Yeah. It notified, I think all of my Instagram followers that I made a threads. Same. And then you're already verified. You don't have to go through any of the work. Yeah. Like it's it's that it's easy, but Twitter like I don't know I I was never personally I was never popular on Twitter. You had a big you have a big Twitter though, don't you? I do, but it's dead. Like my engagement's not great, and also Twitter has sucked mm. for like a really long time. Mm. And it before Musk took it over, it was trashy with good ethics. Mm. Now it's just trashy with questionable <laughs> ethics. Look, I'm very bullish about Musk, and what I would say is. He's never failed, or at least he really has no public failures. Like, the man crushes everything mm. he does. So I would believe if anyone could turn that company around, it's him. Yeah. I just don't got time to wait. And yeah. I actually think it helps my mental health to not be on that app. Yeah, yeah. fair. Yeah. 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 It's gross. Yeah. The people Kinda are is. gross. Yeah, and it's bot crazy, and the ads are weird now because they're, like, taking, like, B and C, like, my pillow ads and shit. Mm. Like, it just feels – the experience isn't there – but yeah, it's just it's not been great for a really long time. Hmm. Did you see Zuckerberg's? The, the reason I downloaded it is because Zuckerberg told me to. Like, <laughs> I, like I saw, like I saw some video like download thread, so I did it. But did you watch this video and hear what he said, or no? No, no. So what he he specifically said that he made threads as a place for people to have safe conversations, <laughs> and I just thought that was f-ing hilarious because obviously it'll turn in, I think, to the same exact Seth's pool. Right. That Twitter is like once you give people an open forum yeah. to talk, you're going to have people talking about things that you're going to hate and you're going to have people talking about things that you're going to love. Well, I just my fear is when I hear somebody like Zuckerberg use the term safe to me, my brain just goes, OK, so is it going to have like a woke censorship. promoting algorithm yeah. censorship? Yeah. Like because yeah. the one thing that I do appreciate about Elon is that he's a little bit like red pilled. And I think we kind of need that counterbalance today when like pretty much all of mainstream media and like. And, you know, all the platforms that Mark Zuckerberg's Mark Zuckerberg owns seems to kind of be on the other side of the spectrum, you know, put her there. Yeah. yeah. Right. There we go. Yeah. So I kind of I'm not shaking anyone's hand. You hear that, Hollywood? I'm on your side and I'm ready to be cast. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. 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 So so I don't know. But um, 
but yeah, I mean, my, my biggest platform per, for me personally is Instagram. And so like the, mm -hmm. the fact that I can like get some people over from, from that, cause my Twitter hasn't really grown. I mean, it, it grew, the biggest bump that I got was like just after I was on Rogan and, um, and I got like, you know, a, a bump on Twitter from that, but it's pretty stagnant, especially compared to like all my other platforms. Are you and Rogan friends? We're, and how is Rogan? Yeah, he's, the, he, I, he's great. He's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was definitely like a little bit anxious before going on, yeah. but, um, but he made me feel super comfortable and you get to, you get like, it becomes abundant, abundantly cl clear right away why he's the goat when you, when you meet him and you, you yeah. know, you're sitting there like opposite him. And did you go in Austin? Yeah. To his studio? Does he have Navy SEALs protecting him? I've heard that. <laughs> I, mean, I heard he's got a tight security ship over there. Yes. No one's getting close. To yeah. Rogue. No one's getting close. Yeah. Did you guys have Well, but LP he himself can yeah. kick your ass. Like he, totally. he himself is like somebody who you do not want to trifle with, you know? Right. He's a tough dude. Have you seen him kick? He's like one of the world's greatest. I don't know the exact like, you know, statistic or accolade, but he's like one of the world's greatest or fastest kickers or highest kickers or something like that. Like he's sick. Yeah. yeah. He's like a martial arts master. Cause he's also, he's like a, a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but fun fact, he's like also a major black belt in Taekwondo. Yes. Yeah. yeah like in the, in the key it, Marshall. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'll F you up. What do you think about, and we've talked about this before, people, and I'm not going to name them by name, but massive movie stars whose names are close to things like The Pebble or The Stone. Um, guys like this who have these insane male physiques who perhaps like, <laughs> I think we're we're taught in Hollywood and like these perfect bodies all come from hard work when in reality they're probably getting help from either yeah, they're getting help from steroids. Yeah. <laughs> like, is that should that be more wi widely talked about? Yeah, that's a good question. I um so I'm really excited about this on my podcast. So I I host my own podcast which you've been on called mm. The Genius Life and I just so I was before we got rolling. I was telling you that I'm a huge James Bond fan. Yes. Right. So I was just in London and I was there for I was like keynoting a conference. But while I was there, I rented a podcast studio and I did a bunch of interviews. And um, one of the guys who I was like super excited to meet was Simon Watterson, who was Daniel Craig's trainer for his wow. entire tenure as James Bond. Wow. So that scene in like uh, Casino Royale where that, that shook the world when Daniel Craig gets out of the water and he's like, it's the first time James Bond actually looks like a killer. He, was, he got Daniel Craig into that shape. Yes. And, um, and so I got to pick his brain about like, how do we, you know, how do we all like get, you know, look more like him in that scene? And it's just like, I mean, it's just like, hard work and discipline and patience but nothing beyond that really you know i mean it's just like eating a eating a, a healthful diet it's sleeping and and taking sleep and recovery like really seriously training hard but um but you know he's bound by the laws of biology just like you and i are so um it's not like he had like any particular like magic pill or potion or shot to get him into that shape you know i think it's just really when you obviously he you know somebody like daniel craig is Incent highly incentivized because he's the leading man in this like in this in this movie and he's he knows he has a shirtless scene coming up but I think these are all like really attainable um, it's like really attainable to like have something like that as a goal Pillsbury what a dream sponsor I've been eating Pillsbury my whole life and these crescent rolls are so unbelievably delicious and your weeknight dinners just got that much easier. There's so many new simple recipes at Pillsbury.com. One of my favorites, I like to take my Crescent Rolls. Again, it's as easy as fill, roll, and bake. You can fill them with, with whatever you want. I like making little spanakopitas. You'll take some spinach and some feta cheese, put it in the crescents, roll them up, pop them in the oven, holy smokes. You could also use it to make little pizza bites. So a little mozzarella cheese, some tomato sauce, maybe a little oregano if you're going crazy. Roll them up, stick them in the oven. They are absolutely fantastic and making weak night recipes so easy. Just as easy as fill, roll, and bake. Again, you can head to pillsbury.com slash everyday dash eats slash fill dash roll dash bake to find some great weekly recipes. You can find Pillsbury in the dairy aisle, dinner prep in under 30 minutes or less. It's that easy. You're going to take out the crescents. You're going to fill them. You're going to roll them. You're going to bake them. Again, Pillsbury, fantastic. Such a great 
quick alternative, so versatile, so delicious, so flaky. It's a quick, quick meal. There's so many new simple recipes at Pillsbury.com. You pop them in the oven. So easy. Just as easy as fill, roll, and bake. But it's attainable, but is it sustainable? Hear me out. <laughs> like the other, like I was talking to, I was uh, spent the holiday up north with my wife's family and she has these beautiful cousins and they're all like thin, gorgeous queens, right? And they all talk about how they want to lose seven to 10 pounds. Mm. They're all like, I'm seven to 10 pounds away from happiness. And I'm like, babe, mm. that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> it was but, epic. <laughs> it was epic. <laughs> right. But like, and I've also known guys like Chris Hemsworth and whatnot who've had to get in shape for those shirtless scenes. And they all say, it's hell. Those two weeks before, it's hell to be mm. at that level of low BMI to look that ravishing to yeah. shake the world. It's goal oriented. They're dehydrated. They're super lean. Probably tanks their hormones to some degree. Yeah, they're miserable. Yeah. They're like having trouble sleeping. And and what I also say to my wife's cousins, I'm like, you know, and obviously far be it from me for to a man to be, you know, telling them anything. <laughs> but like, what I always say is like you guys look perfect and you're kind of eating within reasonable sort of limits what you want. I'm like, yeah, you could probably like really tune in and be seven to 10 pounds lighter, but like how much of an impact is that gonna have on your overall life, on your overall happiness? Are you just gonna be tired and annoyed and hungry all day? Yeah, I and mean- And not look much different. Well, it's hard to get really lean. Like the, and, and also like you don't, it's important for people to realize that like being super lean is not necessarily really healthy either. Like mm -hmm. what the healthy body fat percentage is a range for both men and for women. For men, I think it's somewhere between 10 and 20%. I mean, somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, but for women it's 10, it's 20 to 30%. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big range. And the leaner you get, yeah, the more sacrifices you have to make, it, it impedes on your ability to go out to dinner with friends. Cause eating out is one of the most difficult things to do to maintain that that degree of leanness. Mm -hmm. But again, if you're if you're incentivized and you've got like a, you know, multi-million dollar check coming mm -hmm. from the movie, sure. like it's going to make things a lot different. Obviously. I think I think that's the key. It's the money. The money. We were talking about it earlier like what would get me in the gym? If you were to give me a check <laughs> for a million dollars and I carrot. needed to go and work out 5 days a week for a year. Yeah. I would do it. Yeah. But that would actually that would be a great show to see if truly like mental health wins your mental ability or the money well because i bet you there are people that end up quitting but there's but that's the thing is that there's no other reason really to get that ripped because it's not a health totally like it's not necessarily healthy to have washboard abs 365 days a year like you yeah. don't need to have that and to no. be in pristine health yeah so yeah to have something like as an incentive incentive like that like i know that i'm shooting a scene where i'm going to be coming out of the water presenting you know this new iteration of james bond for the first time like that's an incentive right and then you get the paycheck associated with that but for your average person there's just no major reason unless you want to right unless mm -hmm. it's like a challenge that you want to like adopt for whatever summer or mm -hmm. um you know your wedding or you know I, the people have different reasons but um but yeah i mean i think like it is, it is difficult. It's, you know, it associates with increased hunger. It can, you know, getting really lean is not great for your hormones, um, your energy levels, like the leaner you are, the less energy you have. Like your actual, there's what's called NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is like subconscious movement, basically, like, mm -hmm. you know, fidgeting and, you know, all the movements that you undergo every day that are outside of like conscious thought actually decreases the leaner you get. As, as a means of like your, it's a way for your body to, to conserve energy essentially. So you actually, you have less energy. You feel, you feel more lethargic, um, the leaner you are. And that's not a, that's not a fun place to be, right? You want to have like more energy. So that's why I think it's like, it's important to recognize that, you know, healthy body fat percentages is actually a range for both men and women. But I know plenty of actors who are on that HGH. Yeah. <laughs> They're on that needle. It's common. They're on the tests. I mean, we had Harry Jousey here who's like, you know, influencer, 6'5", 24 years old, and he's on tests. Wow. And he and he's just like, bout it, bout it. Well, maybe because he's so lean that he has to be on. Like, why would a 20-something-year-old need to be on testosterone? Because he looks great. He looks incredible. Yeah, he probably looks amazing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Seriously. But there's, I mean, and this is outside of my wheelhouse, so I don't know. But I'm, I'm assuming that the, I'm assuming that that's something that you really only want to use if medically necessary, and that there would be a cost, you know, whether it's like down the line, sure, 
Um, yeah. You to, really, it's hard to come off of it because your body may never make the same amounts naturally again. Yeah, mm, maybe, yeah. What, um, but that's also an interesting thing too, is like I have so many friends, uh, I have a lot of friends in their 40s, and they'll come to me and they'll be like, crazy news. And I'll be like, <laughs> why? <laughs> they'll be like, I met with a doctor, he tested me, turns out my testosterone's low. <laughs> I'm like, has a has a doctor shilling steroids ever been like, test looks good, <laughs> <laughs> got yeah. nothing for you? No, like everybody's low. And maybe it's low because you're in your 40s and your body naturally down-regulated mm. it. And so, yeah, again, there's like um, pros and cons to the whole thing, but I got, maybe it's an LA thing, but they're all on tests. Yeah. Also, like I, I, mo most of the, of my peers, like, I don't, I don't think I know a single guy who hasn't ha come up with having like low testosterone. I think it's like a real epidemic now amongst men. Isn't it related to depression? I think, yeah. I mean, right? it can be, yeah. I'm fairly yeah. certain that I read that if you are moderately depressed or it's, it's related to stress too yeah, that your yeah. testosterone goes down yeah and i would just assume that all of hollywood is stressed and depressed <laughs> fair and then they have low t yeah, yeah. so they, it's possible that they actually do well being overweight can lead to low t yep. being underweight can lead to low t but also i think part of it has to do with the fact that i mean yeah our diets i mean there's there's there are myriad diet and lifestyle factors but i think one of the one of the things that that not enough people were talking about is the fact that we're you know we're, we're continuously exposed to endocrine disrupting compounds so compounds in our environment mm -hmm. like forever chemicals like pfas compounds bpa phthalates parabens like all these like industrial chemicals that are used to make our everyday conveniences that actually in our bodies act like estrogen mm. or testosterone blockers mm. essentially mm. um and so i think that's that's potentially one of the reasons like for example like touching a store register receipt store register receipts are generally coated in bisphenol A, which we've known for a century at this point, acts like estrogen in the body. CVS is killing all of us. Dude, Holy yes, smoke. those receipts, yes. bro. They're six feet long, they're, they're like longer than I am tall, I typically. Think, I think CVS is why I have gynecomastia. <laughs> it's possible. Yeah, That's it's man possible. boobs, by yeah. the way. I was like, what? Yeah. So, I too have gynecomastia. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. A fun group. Yeah. So CVS creates it, and then you have to go there to get your prescription filled or whatever. And right. it's like, but that's so interesting. Yeah, what else? Cycle. What else causes that? Like besides receipts? Like what's another? What was the term that you used? Uh, endocrine disruptors. Okay. What else is an endocrine disruptor? So your endocrine system. <laughs> just so it's clear, like your endocrine system is your, are your hormones. So yep. thyroid hormone, testosterone, estrogen. Like there are dozens of hormones in the body, which act like long range chemical messengers that influence everything from how you feel moment to moment, hunger levels, development, you know, libido, everything like that. Um, hormones play, I mean, they're, they're everything essentially. And so uh, some of the more common endocrine disruptors in the environment are, B, as I mentioned, BPA, which are in those store register receipts, but also used to make plastics. Hmm. Um, so one of the reasons why you never want to heat food in plastic, you de definitely don't, don't want to heat food, but also microwave food um, in, in plastic. Um, when you get like a sandwich from a deli or even fast food for that matter, and it's and it's wrapped, you know, you get like a warm burger or something, and it's wrapped in like a greaseproof paper. Mm. That greaseproof lining is made with endocrine disrupting compounds. Um, in, uh, I mean, plastics generally the inner linings of cans. Um, even our furniture has the ability to create dust in our environment, which finds its way of migrating into us and that dust is made of these like plasticizing compounds wow. fast food tends to be um you know generally if you if, if a food has to flow through like a network of tubing um if you just kind of like think about like where your food comes from which mm -hmm. i think is an important like thought experiment most people should you know engage with um it's generally generally like leaching you know some of these like these endocrine disrupting compounds, which is one of the reasons why we see that fast food consumption tends to have high levels of um, endocrine disruptors. Wow. Uh, fragrances, Nuts. fragrances is a big one. Phthalates are, are pretty ubiquitous in fragrances. So whenever you have a product that has like fragrance on it, that mm. that that alias fragrance can account can represent hundreds of chemicals that don't necessarily need to be listed out because they're proprietary like fragrances tend to be pro pro proprietary but they're they tend to be also made with uh phthalates there was a uh, for anybody interested in this topic i mean i 
my second book, The Genius Life, I, I covered a lot of this stuff, but there's a researcher named Shanna Swan who's talked about the fact that um, our increasing exposure to these compounds, both in utero, in utero and as adults, has led to all kinds of like hormonal dysfunction, hmm. you know, like and and like really like weird, you know, biological phenomena that can only be explained by our increasing exposure to these compounds. For example, like in dudes, there's um, over time she's tracked <laughs> what what's referred to as anogenital distance. So basically, over time. Like the distance, we call it the taint sometimes, mm, like, you know, the colloquially, gooch. the mm -hmm. gooch, yeah, is actually shrinking in mm. boys, which, you know, I mean, if you think about it, like, if you compare, like, that anogenital distance, you know, if you compare men to women, it's obviously a lot shorter in women. So we're actually feminizing if you use that as a sort of, um, huh. you know, measure of, 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 you know, I guess like the role that hormones play right. in, in physiologic development, gender specific physiologic development. Well, I think we know the title of this episode, Short Taints. Short Taints, <laughs> yeah. What, um, do you wanna, Dr. Soffer, do you wanna share your um, new aspartame findings that you were I, asking about? I do, and then I wanna go into nicotine. Yes. Oh man, cool. <sighs> yeah, we'll get there. Um, so on aspartame, people have said forever, like since, I mean, for as, for as long as I've been alive, I've known that aspartame kills you. That's what they've always said. Aspartame is cancerous. It's terrible for you. Don't drink Diet Coke. And I can say, as somebody that drank a lot of Diet Coke, that was always very sad to me. That I'd drink my Diet Coke, ignore the fact that I'm getting cancer, and keep <laughs> drinking it. Came out that apparently it's only carcinogenic if you drink 2,400 bottles of it a day, <laughs> and apparently it's as carcinogenic as aloe vera. Interesting. So two questions. One, why would aloe vera be carcinogenic? Yeah, I mean... And, and two, is aspartame actually bad for you? Did you hear about this study? Yeah. Okay. Well, it, it wasn't actually a study. It was a okay. statement from, I believe, the WHO and the IARC, which mm. is like an international consortium of cancer mm -hmm. experts. Mm -hmm. Um, but there, truth be told, many, uh, it, it's not the most evidence-based, like, statement. Um, and, you know, the, the WHO has long had red meat as a potential human carcinogen, which it's not. I mean, I've spoken to enough cancer experts. Um, there's nothing inherently carcinogenic about red meat. Um, and the dose makes the poison with all things. And so sure. with aspartame... I don't think that a little bit here and there is uh, is problematic. I personally avoid artificial sweeteners, mm -hmm. personally. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, for people that enjoy Diet Cokes, I'm not going to make the recommendation that one needs to drink Diet Coke. But if that's the thing that helps you better adhere to your diet, um, I wouldn't, like, deprive somebody of that. But in general, I take what's called the precautionary principle approach, which is a much more conservative approach to synthetic chemicals, synthetic industrially produced chemicals like aspartame. Um, some in the evidence-based community might disagree with that statement, but for me, like, I generally don't like to consume artificial sweeteners. I don't use chemical synthetic sunblock um, if given the you know, if given the, the choice, uh, and things like that. Just because there have been too many instances throughout history where, you know, a product was assumed to be safe, it's ended up on the market, th thousands if not millions of people exposed to said product. Um, we take the stance of it being innocent until proven guilty with novel compounds, I think is the wrong approach, only later to discover that, you know, human consequences have been wrought. Uh, you know, there have been numerous instances of this, for example, lead in gasoline and in our paint, you know, like we later found out after using lead for a convenience because it accelerates the drying of paint that it creates dust and we inhale this lead and it's neurotoxic, right? There's been trans fats on the market for D there were trans fats on the market for decades, right, in the form of partially hydrogenated fats, which we only found out, you know, decades later is poisonous to the cardiovascular system and to the brain. So there's all these instances where, like, you know, we just trusted blindly industry and even the FDA. And serious human consequences have, have you know, consequently, like, ensued. And so that's kind of my position with, you know, compounds like aspartame. But I'm not saying that I have any, like, privileged data that it is carcinogenic. Mm -hmm. I think that that... You know, most people that I've that I trust who have looked at that, um, looked at that statement, have said that it was a premature, you know, a, a premature assessment. Do you drink Diet Coke? Love it. It's unbelievable. Oh man, that yeah. that chemical rush, <laughs> that like, 
that umami tart that it, <laughs> that it gives you. There's something like it. Yeah. A Diet Coke with a cheat meal, take me away. And why do we think that the Diet Coke in the fountain is so much more delicious? It depends on the fountain ratio. To bring to circle back to Mickey D's, they just get that syrup to that crisp carbonated <laughs> water. They get the ratio right. What is your favorite type of Diet Coke? I'm glad you asked. Or format. Listen, glass bottle is mm. nice. You're at a hotel or mm. something, mm. high end, mm -hmm. a nice steakhouse. But here's my issue with the glass bottle. Diet Cokes tend to only come in the ones like this. Mm. Mexican Cokes, old school Cokes can be like that. Wow. I need a Diet Coke here. Because if it's in this bottle, I'm going to need two or three. So size aside, because I think the glass bottle of Diet Coke is number one. Yeah. It's gorgeous. People, people want to say fountain. And for a long time, I said fountain until I realized if you run into a bad fountain, you're in deep trouble. Yeah, yeah, You're in yeah. deep trouble. It's rare that you get the golden arches, perfect ratio, just hitting the spot, squeeze a lemon. Wow, there really are drugs in it. <laughs> Yo, with lemon? Oh, man, lemon so food. good. Um, should we do our What Are You Nuts moment of the week? Yes. Should we, should we talk about nicotine? How, Marshall, what, how much? What? Oh, uh, can I ask you, about nicotine? Quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go, go, and then go. we'll go on to What Are You Nuts. Please. Nicotine. Uh, Again, I go down these TikTok rabbit holes. They have me believing, not knowing what to believe anymore. I know I shouldn't consume. Enlighten me. Okay. Apparently, nicotine is good for your brain. Yeah, I mean that's what that's Very what the good. that's what the data seems to suggest, and I actually am a fan of nicotine. Lately, I've been microdosing it a little bit. Okay. And I feel like it does boost my. I feel subjectively that it boosts my, um, and this is an end of one anecdote, but my verbal fluency. Mm. Like I take a little bit of it and I feel like it helps me more easily like translate my thoughts into like cogent sentences, Yeah, <laughs> you know, which I'm already pretty good at, but because I do this professionally, like I host a podcast and I, you know, go on TV and I talk about nutrition and stuff. Like I'm always like thinking and talking on the fly. Like I do notice, like I'm like a, like an athlete of sorts with like, communicating thoughts and like ideas and, and whatever and science and so I do notice that it helps facilitate like it acts like a nootropic like it does have like a cognitive enhancing effect for me Fascinating. about three milligrams I take it too I'm a zen guy yeah no oh you do deal. yeah Leonard Zinner oh, so I'm the only person who's not upper decky uh, lip pillow you know what I mean a little uh, nicotine upper patch <laughs> gorgeous three milligrams there's a there's a brand I have no affiliation but I've become friendly with the owner it's called Knickknack Naturals mm. it's like the cleanest nicotine on the market no artificial sweeteners and it's not a, it's not a pouch you don't have to spit it's like literally like a candy you just like let it dissolve in your mouth and it comes in a bunch of like really like tasty lozenge. flavors yeah like a lozenge yeah. I'm gonna need to meet that man yeah Knickknack all right Knickknack um, Good well, I'm actually going to make, I'm going to change my What Are You Nuts to something health-based because I want to ask you. Basically, every week we do a What Are You Nuts moment of the week. You can go last so you can think Love about it. it. And it's basically just your qualm, your gripe with people, places, and things. Anything that's grinding your gears recently that's on your mind that just annoys oh, you. Oh, man. Love it. Take your time. Okay. No pressure. I'm going to ask. What We're seeing so much of uh, sort of a trend in microdosing. Uh, psilocybin, you know, mushrooms, and then also like ketamine being put in nose sprays. And, and I, I understand the clinical sort of approach to major depressive disorder that it can have like a positive effect. But I also have seen these means, something to the effect of like someone taking ketamine or microdosing and then being like, this is their version of doing the work. <laughs> Right. And like to your point, right, it's like becoming the first stop for people instead of the last stop before counseling and exercise and nutrition and maybe a nice cold plunge sauna. So what are you nuts? It's a little like I mean, we know your your sort of experience with ketamine. I'm getting offered it a lot. And I think like it's a little what are you nuts moment <laughs> to me. Like I just think we should accept what it is, which is a drug, a very strong drug. Thought. Yeah, no, I totally agree. What do they call it? California sober, where people don't drink, but they'll do like the whole, the, like a laundry <laughs> list of, of drugs. Right. Um, no, I, uh, yeah, I don't, um, I don't really dabble with that, with that. But I do think, yeah, the clinical research is really exciting. But the, the whole like casual, it's just like do it every, you know, every weekend to me seems a little bit um, irresponsible. Just because you don't know my experience with ketamine and him I saying, <laughs> saying that was... Uh, Did you have like a pr head. transformative... Like, no, no. Oh. Somebody somebody 
was I was at dinner and somebody pulled out what looked like dentine ice with ketamine and he said it like really helps him with his back. It's prescribed by a doctor. Whoa. It's really chill. Like it's just like like just just try it. And I went to the bathroom and I fell asleep for an hour and a half. No, and I got back and everyone was gone. <laughs> oh my god! So never again. Wow. They're drugs, people. <laughs> They're drugs. And it's just like I agree. What are you nuts? Like stop making people think that drugs aren't drugs. Right. They're drugs. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Wow. My what are you nuts? Oh, I have two. I have two. Which one should I pick? Toto toilets. <laughs> I recently had an experience with a Toto toilet. You know Totos? Yeah. Like, you go to your rich friend's house. They have an $8,000 toilet. You walk in. It lifts up. It sprays some mist. All of a sudden, you sit down. And, oh, my God, my keister burnt to a crisp. <laughs> burnt to a crisp. I don't know if this person just notched up the heated toilet seat to, like, 350 degrees and was cooking my keister like a bird. But when I tell you, I've never been so uncomfortable taking a dump. I could, I could not... Figure out how to shut the heat or lower the heat. So I'm just sitting there, ass burning, asshole burning. And it was just the worst experience in my life. Unless Toto wants to sponsor this podcast and I will take away my entire claim. Uh, but otherwise, Toto Toilets, I'm sorry. What are you nuts? Spending 10 grand? I don't need my ass heated like the sun. I don't. I don't. I don't. That's all. Love what are you it. nuts? You have Totos. Make I wish. <laughs> I need We didn't invest in that. <laughs> Are Toto toilets all super high end and techy like that? Or I, I, think, I think so. so. This one might have been extra techy. Huh. Like there was also a full bidet. Like that stuff's t very nice. Mm. Oh, very yeah. nice. By the way, that reminds me of a second very quick what are you nuts? Just toilet paper in general. Mm. Somebody mentioned this to me, my wife, the other day. She said, if you got a little piece of duty on your hand, how would you take it off? How would you clean it? Soap and water. Soap and water, right? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't take a piece of paper and wipe it and pretend that all of a sudden the duty's gone. <laughs> yeah. That's, right. That's, a good That's point. exactly what we do with toilet paper. You're right. I've been a wipes boy for the last decade. Do you use dude wipes? Yeah, of course. You do. Best. Is that a sponsor of the show? No, they it should be. It would be a good one, though. <laughs> yeah, they really <laughs> should. Quick plug. Quick plug. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> Man, what do you very, got? Very interesting. Um, well, I was just in London recently, as I mentioned, and uh, my, so I guess like my what do you nuts has like two sides to it. The fir the the what do you nuts for me would be, um, it was my first time seeing like a true English breakfast that has like beans for breakfast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you ever had like baked beans with your eggs? Yeah. No. It's it's well, it's weird. It is. It's it's super odd. And so I was like, what do you nuts? Baked beans with breakfast. And so I actually didn't try them. I was staying at a hotel where that was available for breakfast every day, mm -hmm. right? And I didn't try them until the last day. And on the last day, I tried them thinking that they were going to be like American-style barbecue baked beans. And they're very different, and I actually really enjoyed them. It's so good. Yeah, it's so good. They're kind of ketchup-y. They're, they're like... kind. Yeah, Heinz it's not as sweet. It's not as sweet. So they're actually, dare I say, healthier than like... You know, and beans are healthy. Like legumes are healthy. And um, so for the first like six days of my trip, trip, I was like, what are you nuts? Beans for, for, for breakfast with eggs? Doesn't make any sense. And, um, and then on the last day I tried them and I was like, actually, maybe I'm the one that's nuts because they're pretty freaking good, you know? Good for the heart. Yeah. The more you eat. Yeah, brec English breakfast. <laughs> I'm like suddenly a fan. The more you fart. There the you more go. you fart. The better you feel. So eat your beans. You don't know this? No. <gasps> What? Beans, beans, they're good for the heart. The more you eat, the more you fart. The more you fart, the better you feel. So eat your beans with every meal. Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> Max hated that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, thank you for coming on the pod. Yo, yeah, this is so thank fun. You. Thank you. Oh, thank man. you, guys. Rate, yeah. rate, review, do the things, five stars. Go listen to Max's pod. Buy his book. Thank you, brother. Um, anything else? No. Excellent conversation. Thanks for coming. Loved it. It was great. Yep. It was great. Anything else you want to plug? Uh, just my podcast, The Genius Life, and I'm also I have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Max Lugavere. I'm active on Instagram. All the places, yeah, just come say what's up. Come say what's up. Yeah, and if you're like new to my podcast, check out the episode I did with Josh. It was like a really good one. Yeah, we had yeah. fun.